we came in a uh, badger video for our water jet. So this is a an Omax Global Max 1508. Um, it has a 10 horsepower motor that pumps water to 30,000 psi. The principle of the water jet is that it pumps water with this enormous pressure, and that alone is enough to cut some softer things like foam, rubber, leather, some, uh, yeah, it, there, there's a list that you can see of you know, what you can cut with water. And then for harder things, um, including metal, stone, glass, etc., uh, it mixes with a garnet abrasive. So the garnet is a fine mineral that is crushed up in, into a pretty fine grit, and that gets mixed with the water, and when they're shot out together, it's like liquid sandpaper that will cut through anything under the sun. Plus or minus. It may take a long time to cut through diamonds, but it, it will. Um, so that's, that's the basic premise of the machine. Um, we'll go over some more details in a minute. Uh, I just want to um, quickly hit on, on the safety bits to get that out of the way. The, obviously, the main danger is that this is shooting a beam of water powerful enough to cut through six inches of steel, so it will most certainly cut through any body part. Um, so when this machine is running, when the water is shooting out, there cannot be any hands inside the cutting area. Um, so you just need to restrain that desire and not do it. Um, if you were to get cut by it, obviously you need to go to the hospital and try to collect any amputated pieces. If you were to even get cut though, there is a, a safety danger risk because this water is pretty much stagnant. So it builds up a lot of not fun bacteria. So if you do get a cut in there, you probably get a pretty nasty infection. Um, and so with that in mind, on the side of the control console, there is a nose here. And this is what you should take with you to the emergency room. Um, this lists how any injury should be treated. Um, and I just, just want to reinforce that this is not a trivial tool. Um, it's pretty easy to use once you get a feel for it, but you do need to make sure that you are treating it with a lot of respect. Um, there is also obviously the, we'll always be wearing eyeglasses in the metal shop, but when this is shooting, sometimes the water can spray and the water's been mixed with this garnet and you really don't want that getting in your eye. It's a very irritating, abrasive material. So with that out of the way, we'll go over the basic anatomy of the machine, how, how, it, how it works. So the water is going to come from the wall over here. So you can see the copper tube ends in that ball valve. When you're ready to get started, we'll do this shortly, you'll turn the ball valve, and then that sends water to the pump and also to the spray hose. So the pump takes the water, pumps it up to an enormous pressure, where it goes through this whip. This is a, a stainless steel tube that comes down here to the z-axis where it can go up and down. Uh, this machine doesn't do any tilting funny business, it's just up and down, left, right, forward, back. Um, as it comes down, it first goes into this piece called the nozzle. Uh, the nozzle is where the abrasive comes in, so this plastic hose plugs in there. And then underneath the nozzle is the mixing tube. And the mixing tube is a piece of tungsten steel, um, and that's where the water shoots out of. So we'll go over that in a bit more detail later. One important note that I just want to be very clear about is this piece is very brittle, uh, and if you hit it against something, it will break. And that, it costs about $200 to replace, so that is a liability that you are taking on when you use this machine. If you were to break it, that cost is on you. Um, so just that you need to be thinking twice before every move, so you're sure you are not gonna hit anything. Uh, and as long as you're on cost, the, this machine does cost money to use for the electricity, for the water, for the garnet, for the just the wear on the, the mixing tube that needs to be replaced periodically, even if, when it isn't broken. Um, so when you're using garnet abrasive, it's a dollar a minute. And when uh, if you're just using water, then it's 75 cents per minute. And the machine keeps track of that, and then you can pay either, either online or in cash those numbers may change, but it'll be reflected in the spreadsheet on the computer. Um, this is called the gantry, or the bridge that rides across. Uh, and so, so you can orient yourself to the machine. 
this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. There are labels on the machine to help help you remember that. And it can be a little counterintuitive because most people think the wider axis is x, but in this case, it goes x, y. Uh, the cutting area is within here. Um, and this is water to slow down the jet of water that shoots out. It goes all the way down to the floor, so it's about three feet deep. So you really don't want parts dropping down there. If you cut something and then it falls, you pretty much consider it lost. Uh, you, in general, you don't want to be sticking your arms down into there because you risk cutting yourself on these steel slats. So these steel slats are what support your material. Um, and they, they hold it up, but they I mean, things can, can fall through. They also, it's a consumable. Like As the jet crosses it, it cuts a path through it. And over time, we'll have to replace these. That also means that over time, these are getting cut up and create sharp edges. So beware of that. Um, another anatomical feature of this is the drain hose right over here. So the way this works is it's used to let water leave the machine as it comes in. And it's also used to set the height of the water. So right now the water is just above the height of the grates, which is okay for something like sheet metal. If you were cutting something thicker, uh, in general, you want to cut submerged, and that means you want the tip of the water jet, the mixing tube, to be underneath water, so it isn't spraying everywhere. And that means you need to raise the height of the water, and you do that by just lifting this a little bit. So you go from here, maybe like here, and now the water will fill up to that height. And it might take a little time to get to that height. Uh, and similarly, if you want to lower the water, you just bring it down like that. So when we put material in, we'll see how it lands and, and how we like it. Um, so in terms of what you might use this machine for, you can use it to cut anything. That doesn't mean it's the best tool for cutting anything. Uh, it may be slower than just drilling a hole, for example. Um, but if you want to cut an intricate shape out of sheet metal, if you want to cut through, in this case, marble or granite, uh, thicker metal, doing any kind of interesting shape, then this might be the tool. And so with hopefully after this video and some experimentation, you'll get a sense of when, when to use this tool. Um, so we're gonna go through the startup procedure. When you're using the tool, you're gonna first start by coming over here, turning both of these switches on. This sends power to the control box, this sends power to the pump, and then you're gonna turn the water on. And this is turned on by turning that ball valve in line. So when the ball valve is pointing, in the in line with the hose, the water is going to flow, and you can tell that it's flowing because this little hose is putting out water. This is the cooling line going through the pump. So as long as this ball valve is open, this is running. Um, and let's say you're leaving the pump for a few hours, you're, you're all finished. You can make sure that you remember to turn this ball valve off because this will not be running anymore. Um, so now both of those are on. We'll turn these switches on. So this powers on the pump and this powers on the control box. Uh, and then we're gonna come over to the computer terminal and we're gonna push this green button. So this green button is gonna power on the control box. And you can hear the stepper motors sort of clicking into place as they figure out, as they, as they energize. Uh, while the computer is booting up, we can look at these buttons. This is the e-stop. So this button you hit in an emergency. So that means if it looks like a little kid is reaching their hand in at the, at the cool spraying toy, you whack that button. It will shut everything down, the computer, the whole thing will turn off. Um, so if you just realize that your part isn't quite where you want it to be, probably don't hit that button. That will be frustrating. In that case, you could hit pause, which is the, the blue one, or stop, which is the red one. Um, this is the reset button, so I'll show you how to use that in a minute. Uh, so just to go over it again, and I'll, I'll label these so it'll be more clear. This is e-stop, this is uh, stop, this is turn on, so this we use to turn on the control box. This is reset, this is for like, clearing a fault, and this is for pause. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna come over here and two windows have already opened once we turned on the computer. So the first, the, this top window, is the Make Haven store, and this is how you'll pay for material. So once you're done, you'll go down to Water Jet Cutter, and I'm just gonna search for it. So Water Jet Cutter, if you're using water only, with abrasive, if you were to break a mixing tube, and then here's the scent credit. So we'll show you what that looks like in a minute. The other one is the Water Jet Log, 
and this keeps track of who's been using the water jet and for how long. This is very important, obviously, so we can make sure that everyone's uh, paying to cover the cost of materials, but also to make sure that we keep up with maintenance. So this is how we keep track of the of how much it's being used, which is very important for making sure that we're doing maintenance as we need to do it. Um, so those are the, those two documents. I'm going to look at the desktop to show you some other important things. Over on the right side are some manuals. So there's maintenance, operator's guide, the pump operation. Um, most of the time, you're, you're welcome to read through them. I think the operator's guide might be the most useful, but shouldn't necessarily be terribly relevant in your day-to-day -day use of the water jet. Uh, something that might be useful to you is this folder. So this contains the software that you need to do the design work um, for the water jet. So this has two programs in it, the Global Max Make and Global Max Layout. So all this is already loaded on this computer. These are the icons down here. But if you wanted to do design work on your computer or practice the software, get a good sense of how to use it, then you can get a flash drive. This file is about half a gigabyte. So I figured it easier just to I mean, do it however you like. You sign into your email, whatever works. But you can plug a flash drive into here um, and then copy and paste this file in. Um, and then you're welcome to plug that into your own computer. And then the steps for registration, for registering that software, are right here. So this is just a PDF document that goes through how to register your software. Um, so for anyone who's looking to design work on their own computer, that's, that's the useful bits here, these, these two files. Um, and then that should be it. There's a folder here for member files. So when you import SVGs, when you design things, when you save things, you can put it right in member files. Um, and now we'll get to some of the more interesting pieces. So first we'll go to uh, layout. That's the blue dot, blue icon. And go through the uh, important things to see here. I just want to make clear there's a pretty complicated program. We're not going to go through all of it, so we might have another video on how to really get into the nitty-gritty. This is going to go over the basics of how to do most things, um, and then when you want to figure out how to do more complicated pathing, altering traverses, stuff like that, then we'll, we'll get into that later. Something that should be helpful generally are these are a whole bunch of hotkeys, shortcuts. So these are the ones for layout. There are a whole lot of them. Um, and in case it isn't clear, clear it means A, three point arc, so it goes like this, like this, two columns. Um, and I'm just gonna click on the buttons here so that you can see what I'm doing, but those are what the hotkeys are for. So here we just have a hole. Um, it's just sitting in, in space. This is our hole, the, the bed of the water jet. Um, the water jet bed within the soft limits is 30 inches, in the x direction and 57 in the y so you have 30 by 57 inches to work with uh, and just so i'm clear what soft limits are after the machine is homed which we'll see in a minute soft limits are the area that it's willing to work in if you go out of that you risk hitting the mixing tube against the frame of the machine um, so soft limits help to re prevent that um, so this might change with time but you probably wouldn't even notice because it's all taken care of in the in the homing process so this is the whole grid we have to work with. This is called the datum, or the, the origin, which is in the corner closest to us. Um, we can draw shapes. So these are the, the draw things. Uh, you can do lines, boxes, circles, etc. text. Um, a lot of these, the, the ones that have a little red triangle, you can right click. So for line, you can do a single line, double line, continuous line. For text, there are various options. Um, so there's, there's a lot of options within here. We can just, uh, actually let's, let's get rid of this. So I'm gonna go to select. So I just right clicked, uh, select, and then all, and then hit delete to get rid of it. So we can make a circle. There are a lot of different kinds of circles. We'll just choose a center radius because that's a pretty simple kind. I'm gonna click, drag it out. The diameter will say two inches. Um, click okay. So now we have this circle we can um, click and put some text in the middle. So we'll put just the letter H, the scale. These are various fonts you can use. Um, here, this type of font is used to hold the whole thing together. Um, 
So if you if this were to be your positive piece, you would want this so that it all stayed together. Um, so very response, so click OK. And now to move, we'll click on move, you click on the piece, move it around. Um, I'm not actually sure, I guess these are supposed to be the, the lead-ins eventually, so we'll, I'm going to right click on deselect all, and then we can see what the colors mean, because that's, that's an important piece. Green is a traverse, and you can see this here by clicking on quality. So here you can see the T, the green T is for traverse. Traverse means just to move, so there won't be anything shooting out. Heads up traverse means that the head of the water jet is going to move up by about two inches um, while it's moving. So that helps prevent collisions. So if you had a clamp or something, it, this is a good way of making sure it stays above it. So just, just for yucks, let's say we had a, a clamp here, so we wanted to make sure it wasn't going to hit it. I'm going to um, select heads up traverse and click on there. Now it's that dotted green line, and that means it's going to be higher. So we can also select any of these qualities. So quality is an important thing to know about. One is the lowest quality, but fastest. So the pump pumps at only one pressure. The garnet flows at one rate. And so the only thing the machine can change is how quickly it moves. So quality one means it's going to calculate, based on your material thickness and the type of material, how quickly it can move just to cut through, not to leave a nice edge. Versus a five, which is going to go much slower, but leave a much smoother edge that's much flatter and generally of higher quality. Minimum taper, so as the water jet shoots out, um, it leaves a taper, which means it isn't cutting exactly straight. And so what this does is it it's, tries to minimize that taper. So it, it uses a bunch of the programming techniques that it has to minimize it to make as straight a line as possible. There's etch. So etching is with abrasive. So let's say you just wanted to cut partially through uh, to make a folding, so a place for, for metal to fold. If you wanted to write a name, something like that, then that would be an etch. Scribe is like etching, but without abrasive. So it's just water. And um, and so and again, it's you, this is a parameter you can set later, but this is to not cut all the way through. Water only cut just tells it to cut only with water. Um, again, that's your softer materials. And then there's a lead in or lead out. So we'll go over that in a minute. So um, we're just, we can mess around here for a little bit. So uh, the, the important things are, are defining how you want things to cut. So here, right now, it's going to traverse around the green. That's not terribly helpful. It's not going to cut. So you would select one. And I click here, but only to the top half of the circle. So let's say we actually wanted it to do everything in red. You could right click on quality. And now it'll say all, for example. So now I've selected all and click there, and now everything turned red. There are no traverses, everything here is gonna cut. Similarly, some of the selection tools that it offers, either under select, deselect, or under quality, are window, so that lets you draw a window of things to select. Um, I guess nothing was contained in that. Um, oh, but it's already, it's already red. So let's say we wanted to make it two, now, now it's quality level two. So that's how some of the selection works. Um, I'm gonna just delete this. I'm gonna go select all, delete, and do a box just so we can show some of the other features. It doesn't really matter what size it is. We'll tell it that we want it to cut with a quality one. We just wanna cut right through, so we select all and one. And we'll put a chamfer on it. Chamfer means a um, an angled corner piece. So we can click chamfer. I'm just going to click here and I put a chamfer on it. So we put the distance of one inch, which is obviously a pretty large chamfer. And we can put a fillet on the other side. So the fillet will click here and here. And I put a little quarter inch uh, fillet on there. Um, so let's say this was the shape that we wanted. Now comes the trickier piece of auto padding. So auto padding is the computer trying to figure out how you want it to cut. And it doesn't always get it right. Most of the time it does though. So this is what we're going to try first. Let's say you, you tried it and it didn't work how you wanted, then you can right click and do advanced and configure. So this lets you try to try something else, get a little more into the, the configuration. And then the last option here is erase leads and traverses. So let's say you tried one and you didn't like it, you click that and it gets rid of everything that it tried. So we'll start by auto path. 
and let's see what it did. So this is where it's going to start, and we know that because if you follow that green line, it comes in, and this is the longer lead-in. So this yellow is where it's starting to cut. So it's going to turn the pump on, it's going to start spraying water, and then it's going to cut in, and then by the time it gets here, we want it to be fully cutting. So that means that this, whatever this is over here, is going to be um, probably a waste. It's just going to have a random line cut into it. So you need to bear that in mind. So let's say you actually wanted a nice piece of metal with this hole cut out, then that wouldn't be good for you. You would want these lead-ins to be on this side. But this is thinking the piece of metal that we want is this shape. So it's leading in from the outside. Uh, then it's going to come in, it's going to go around, and then bop out of the shorter tail, and it's going to end in the upper right corner. So this might be good for you, or it might not. So let's say it's not, then we would erase leads and traverses, go back to auto path, go to advanced and configure. And here we get to control some of the features. So you can see here this, this green diamond is highlighted, which means it starts in the lower left corner, which we can see it. It started in this lower left corner, and it ends in the upper right corner. So maybe that's what you want, maybe it isn't. I think in general, starting in the lower left makes sense because that's closest to you, so it's, it's kind of easy to make sense of in terms of where it ends. That's as you please. Um, then these, I think in, in general, are okay to leave. Um, we can see some other techniques in a minute for how to change things. Uh, so this reminds me of another important technique, which are tabs. So let's say you want to keep this piece of material. This is what you want. So you don't want it falling down into the bottom of the tank. Then what you do is you right click on, on this button here, the one that oh, says lead something. Uh, and then you can say create tab. So this tab, wherever you put it, is just a little piece of metal that's gonna come out. So you can look at what the colors mean. So it's cutting with red and then with purple, which is the quality three, I'm pretty sure. Yep. And then it's doing the lead ins. So this is where it's gonna start punching in. And then green is a traverse. So this is actually a little piece of metal that's gonna connect it to the rest. So once it cuts through, it won't just fall down to the bottom, it'll still be connected. And then you can just snip this little piece of metal off or sand it off. So that's how you make sure that a piece of metal stays attached. That's fairly important. Um, then you could say you actually wanted to keep the outside piece, but you didn't want your piece to fall in. You could uh, move the existing lead. So you'd take it, oh, oh, I'm sorry, that's a tab, not a lead. So let's, let's look at the lead. So let's say we auto path again, we just click, and it's coming in here um, because it's, it says, well, we're already cutting in to this area, so might as well just use that same place. Um, so that's a good point. So I'm just gonna control Z to get rid of it to have a more normal situation. So we auto path, and it's coming in here, but we're like, oh, actually, we want, we want to keep the outside and just have this weird shape hole in it, then we want to move that to the other side. So we're gonna right click, and move that existing lead to the inside. Ta-da! So now it's cutting from the inside and your outside will be the nice shape. You can move things, um, copy to make an array, and I think, um, oh, and then the other important thing that we'll get to is importing things. So let's say you made a file in Illustrator or Inkscape or uh, SolidWorks, whatever it may be, you can import it. So you go to File, Import from other CAD or Insert, um, we don't need to save this drawing. And then you go here and, and import your whatever file, DXF, um, whatever's easy for you. So here it says it supports DWG, DXF, ORD, PDF, SVG, AI, and EPS. So those are the, the file types that it supports. So if you send it as any of those, it should be good. Um, and then you would open it up. So let me see, we have the official robot here. Um, and the robot, you can see, has lots of little points on it. So we're gonna click clean first, which is in this over on the right side. Uh, and clean gives us all these options. Oh, oh. <laughs> so this gives an important piece of information. It says this drawing is huge and well beyond the size of any machine. Uh, this, is, this may indicate that the drawing has not been scaled properly. So it has a good point, that is totally true. So I can click no. And we can actually see that our bed size is way down here, this little speck. So this is a good learning opportunity. What this means is our piece is way too huge. So I'm gonna right click, select all, go to size, and then put in our scale factor. 
So I want to scale it to like 0 0.001. Like I want it a thousandth the size because that is way too big. So that's really small. And I'm going to move it. So click on the move button from here over to here. And zoom and see what we got. All right, so now here's our little robot that's only a few inches tall. So we'll move you again from here down to here. So man, all right, now this is a more reasonable size and you can click clean again. And so now it gives us a whole bunch of options, divide overlapping entities. If there are unnecessary dots, it gets rid of them. Um, if there's a circle that's close to a circle, but not quite, they would convert that. If there's an unclosed path, like you're drawing something and your path wasn't quite closed, then this would pull that together. It should be important so you didn't have breaks in your shape. Um, so we can start that and it says all the, the things that it did. It removed 128 dots, 15 short entities, eight gaps, things like that. So now it looks a bunch cleaner. Um, we're looking around and there actually there are some weird little things here. So these little, little jagged pieces we, we don't like. So what we can, we, there are a bunch of ways of fixing that up that you can explore on your own. Um, we're going to click Divide, and I'm just going to put a dot right here. And so now we can draw a line between here and here, and then Delete. So I'm going to click Select. I'm just going to select behind these pieces, get rid of these. So now that's a much cleaner up so the water jet isn't trying to cut some weird jaggy thing. You're doing the same thing here. Just go around and make sure that's good. Um, so that's, that's how you do that. Um, in terms of, let's see, what else? So then, then you actually want to cut the thing. So let's pretend we're doing this. We would go back to select and all, and we're going to go to quality. We're just cutting through. And this is actually a pretty complicated shape. So we're not going to um, all, all oh, so then it's still yellow because it's selected, but I'm going to deselect all, and now it's red. So if we click Auto Path here, it's coming in from the lower left corner, cutting into the H, going around, going into the M, cutting it out, going to the I's. And that's important because let's say we did the outside first and cut out the outside, then it would be loose or maybe held on by a tab. But then when you went to cut the M and the H, it would be all wobbly and bouncing around. So it's important to do the internal features first and then go outside to the robot, cut that out, and then leave. So this actually looks pretty good. Um, so then we would click on post and it's asking us where does it want us to start. We can start here or start here. We're going to tell it down here. And now we can, this is an important piece about offsets. So here's our line that the red straight line is, is where our model tells it to cut. And then the dotted line is the area where it's actually going to cut, where the beam of water is going to cut out. And that beam of water is about 0 0.015 or 15 thou wide. So, sorry, inches. Um, and so you need to make sure that that's on the side of the line that isn't important to you. So let's say it's on, uh, like here, you probably actually would want the cut on the outside, the offset on the outside, but for our purposes it's fine. Um, so this is where you would see that. And then I'll show you how, how you would fix that. Uh, you can also he see here there's a, there's a problem. The water jet's going all kinds of wonky, so you'd want to look back at your model and see what's happening here to cause the water jet to do these wacky shapes. You can see the green traverses, the ins and the outs. Um, and then an important piece about the mixing tube that creates this 0.015 inch offset is over time that hole is going to get a little bigger and a little bigger. So if it's really important to you to have a perfectly as small an offset as possible, then you're welcome to buy your own mixing tube. We're probably going to replace them as they break, as they, um, like once they're really well, well used. So what you can also do is cut a calibration block, so just a square, and then measure the size of it. And once you see, you, you can measure it, you see it's supposed to be one inch, but I'm actually getting 0.9 whatever inches. And then you can say, all right, well that is my new offset. The bead of water is this wide, so now I can enter that new number in here, and it should still be very accurate, even though the beam of water is a little wider. So that's that piece. But let's say we don't like this. We wanted this offset on the other side. We're gonna click reject. Go to post, I'm going to right click post and click custom toolpath options. So it gives us a bunch of questions here. And um, I'm going to ask it to ask me each opportunity where to put the kerf compensation. So kerf is the width of the beam of water, same for saws. And I'm asking it to ask me. So we're going to start. 
It says pick start. Oop. I didn't do so we're going to start here. And then it says an opportunity has been reached to change the tool offset. What would you like to do? So I'm going to say offset to the left. And as we go here, we're going to, um, let's see, try to zoom in a little more. I don't want to let them, so we're going to, nope. Oh, oh, wait, so you're going to click continue. That's why I want them to click. And then here the water is coming in, and we can click whether to go to the left or, or, to, or the right, knowing that the water is going to be on the left side, because that's what we told it where to, put the off, where to put the offset. So if we click here on the right side, the offset is going to be to the left of that. It's going to be traveling this way and go to the left, which is what we want. So I'm going to click there. Now we can see that the beam of water is on the inside of that. So that's what we wanted. Um, and then we're going to go to the next one. And here again, this is on the M. It's going to be to the left. So we're going to click on this side. And so now, oh, something's backwards. Come on. I don't like it. I won't let me go over there. Um, but we mixed something up. But that's, that's the basic idea. So we don't need to totally get into that. That's, that's the principle of it. Continue. Here we want to go, in this case, since it's the eye, we want to go to the inside, to the left. So it's cutting on the inside. So that, that's the basic idea here. So I'll cancel that because we don't need to go through this whole robot. Um, and then we're going to save it. So let's say we did like this. I'm going to just select all, I'm sorry, select all, delete, give us back our circle, just super simple, um, auto path, boom. I'm going to tell it quality one, so just cut quickly, and now we're good to go. I'm going to click on post. We have to save it. So we'll save it as test circle. This will be in uh, member files. And it's saving it as a TXF. So that's the design file. This isn't the cutting file. So we save, tell it where to start, tell it left. We say, sure, perfect circle cut, save. Um, and now it's just been saved. So now we're going to go to the second step of actually using the machine. So now we're past the boring pieces. Now we're actually going to start cutting. As I said, there's a lot more to be learned here. Um, feel free to ask the facilitators questions, play around, download the software on your own computer, and get a feel for it there. Um, and so now we're going to go over to make. So let that start up. Um, just to hit on some other other things, like before we get started there, there are a few things we want to do. And they've been written right up here, so you don't forget. Uh, you, you need to wipe off the rails before you start, so that you aren't crunching over the, the garnet that's been blown off onto the rails. And you want to check the time on the machine. Um, so I, this, this rag just lives right here on the side. It's a little uh, grommet you just put it on. And then I'm just going to show you here, you just take this, and you're just going to wipe across these, these rails or what the bearings ride on. So it's going to just wipe them off. It's just to get the, the garnet sand off there. So I'm just going to run to the other side and do that. And the second step is to check the time. So let's say the person before us didn't enter the time that they used, then we would be charged for both our time and their time. So that's why it's important to check. Um, and as a note, we have, we have cameras around, so if that were to happen, we could just check to see if we forgot to put their time in. Um, the note that it popped up with here is that the machine needs to be homed. So we're just going to click OK. There's this red box here that's telling us to home it, so that's easy. Um, so now we're going to um, check the time. So that's an important piece. So it's under history, counters, and timers. So just say it again, history, counters, and timers. And then the important number is total hours on pump. So here it says 2.315. So then you go to the spreadsheet that turns on when you turn on the computer. And 2.315 is where it left off last time. So when I used it last, I started at 2.284, finished at 2.315, and that's how it, it puts us in the next one. So then this person would put in their name, the total hours on the machine after the use. When you're done, you check this history, counters, and timers again. 
it'll tell you, so let's say just hypothetically that, that was 2.4, it'll say that you used it for 0 0.085 uh, uh, hours, and then you say whether or not you used abrasive, so in case it's yes, you put a Y, and then it tells you that's $5.10 if you paid, and you'd pay either on the website or in the cash box by the 3D printers, you click Y. Let's say you broke the mixing tube, and you would also pay for that on the store, and if you paid for it, you would click Y. So I'm going to just delete that, because that was a hypothetical. Um, all right, and we'll put that in at the end, once we're done cutting. So that's, that's a pretty important place to keep an eye on. So just say one more time, history, counters, and timers. Don't, don't forget it, beginning and the end. Beginning to make sure you're not going to get charged for more than you wanted, and so that you can pay for what you used. So the first thing you need to do is to home the machine. But right now, the machine is in the far corner. It's all the way over there, and it would take a little while to come over here. Um, so what you can do to make that a little faster is to jog the machine from there over to here. However, I'm gonna point out something on the screen. It says soft limits are disabled. So what that means is it doesn't know where it is, and if, it, if you tell it to, it'll just run itself right into the side of the machine. So it's in a bit of a delicate state right now, so you need to be extra cautious about how you're using it. So um, we're gonna bring it back towards us, so that's gonna be the down arrow. But actually, before we can do that, it's, there's a fault here. And the fault it just has in the beginning of, of every startup. Um, to clear that fault, we click the reset button. That's the black button here. And then the fault is cleared. So now that's gone. So as the computer starts up and the machine starts up, they aren't talking to each other, so there's a fault, so you just clear that. So now that fault is gone, and now we're gonna bring the, the machine closer to us. So that is negative, like Y negative is what that is. So it, there are also the vinyl labels on there. So that's a down arrow. Is you can see it, the machine moving slowly towards us. But that's going to take a while. So you can do is press shift and down arrow. And now it is going at, at the rapid speed. Um, however, like I said, it could hit anything right now. So you need to keep a very close eye on it. And when it looks, you can get a closer look at this. It's going to home to about here. When you get anywhere close to this vicinity, you stop and start homing, the, the automatic homing process, which is nice and slow and gentle. Another thing to bear in mind is this tip, let's say it was a little lower, could hit this aluminum, and it would just whack it and break it. Boom, just like that, done. Um, so you need to make sure to raise this up. If there are any clamps in the way, any material, be very mindful of that. Uh, it's really easy to have your wallet lightened by $200 very quickly with this machine. So I'm gonna get a little bit closer, so right about here, and now I'm gonna click on machine needs to be homed, click here to home machine, this is the red box right at the top. It says raise the z-axis by how much? Let's just be safe and raise it by an inch. If there's other stuff in the way, raise it accordingly. Begin homing, so raise itself by an inch, and it's gonna slowly bring itself over. So you, this process normally takes about 10 minutes, which is kind of a long time. So there is a workaround. Um, and so what you can do is watch the machine. So you can see that it's bringing itself closer and closer on the x-axis. That yellow cone is actually getting smushed a little bit. Now you can see that it's found, um, it stopped moving, right? It's found the edge. And now it's, it's doing some thinking or some processing, but there's actually not a, a whole lot going on. So you can skip this step. So you can see here that it's only, it still has a minute and a half remaining. So if you want to skip that, you just hit the pause button. So we click the blue pause button, and now it's going to like say, okay, cool, we're good with X, we're going to go to Y. Uh, so if you're having any problems with homing, then don't do that. Do the whole long homing process. But now it's looking for the Y limit. So it's going to work its way down. And the way this works is it just pushes up against the limits. They're hard limits, they're not limit switches. So it's physically pushing against it and measuring the force. Um, so we're gonna give that a minute to do its thing. And while it's doing that, we can look at another step of startup that is now appropriate to do. So that's the air system. So the garnet that's in here is being filled from a much bigger hopper over here. And that comes in through this hose. The way it gets pushed through the hose is with air pressure. So to make that air pressure turn on, 
this needs to, same similar ball valve, needs to be in line. And then this one, which is a little harder to see, also needs to be in line. It's just another ball valve here. You can check the pressure meter to make sure that there is, in fact, air going to it. The regulator is fixed, so that shouldn't change. Um, and then this is the hopper. There's another ball out there, but that should rarely be closed, so you shouldn't worry about the one at the bottom, though it is there. Um, and then this hopper gets filled with garnet. And an important thing to check is maybe someone depressurized it, and then this handle would be dropped down. But you can see that the handle, the handle is firmly seated up at the top. Um, and we can actually, let's go through the garnet refilling process now. So, um, we need to depressurize it. We want to get the garnet in there. So the way we depressurize is we can turn either of these ball valves off. We're just going to turn this. So now the air is not going to flow from the system into here. And we are going to um, pull this up. So this is the pressure release. It's a little bit hard to pull and it's quite loud. And it gets harder. Just pulling up on this, um, and I. You can also, now that there's less pressure, just slowly push on that. So you don't need to get all the air out. Again, if you're not wearing safety glasses, you're going to be in a lot of pain after that. Now that you burn it in your eyeball. Um, so now this is open. We're going to put this screen on top. So this helps to screen out any anything that you don't want going in here. Let's say a little, you know, piece of just piece of gravel, whatever, got in there clogs the system and that's a not fun day. So make sure that you have a screen in there. The abrasive lens over here. So it's just over here. There's right now about 2,000 pounds of it. Um, this is just a bag that has a little left. So you can put this in. Each bag is 50 pounds. So it'll be harder when you're carrying it. And the way you would know that you need to replace the abrasive is because you'll see that this line will be empty and the garnet hopper up here will be slowly depleting. So if that happens during the middle of a cut, we'll just click pause in the machine, refill this, and then be back on your way. So again, that um, valve stopper is down, the grate is in. You know, open this home, you have a big bag. Get here, you use a knife to cut the top of it. Take it and pour it in, and it falls through pretty quickly. I'm just going to pour the rest of this bag in. And it uses about half a pound a minute, just to give you a sense. So this hopper holds about 100 pounds. And now you can just use your hands. This is just sand, effectively. It's a little sharper, but you know, it won't, won't hurt your hands. Just to get the ground down to the hole. All right. Shake that guy off. So it's a good seal. And then we'll turn the air back on. So turn this on while you're, you need to actively hold this up. So that's an important piece. You need to be holding this up to create that seal. Now it's repressurized. And that's not going anywhere. So let's put this back in, and that's how you refill the garnet hopper. That's a fairly important piece. For the machine to work, the air needs to be on. These two hoses, this sprays water, so when you're done, just for spraying off your piece. This sprays air, just for drying off your piece. So that's what those are for. So automatic homing routine completed, so that's good to go. So now it knows where it is. All right, so we look at the water height. You know, let's say, let's grab our piece of material now and put it on so that we can make sure it's the correct height. Especially if you're holding an internal edge, you'll probably want to wear gloves. Slide this in here. And I'm just going to push this up against that and the block on the side. Um, these little lines here, so they're just sharp lines there, and along the inside of the tank, the other side, show you where the grates are, so you know where to clamp. The clamping options may change with time, 
but for right now, we'll show you what they are. Uh, it should probably be pretty intuitive, and, and when you're doing your badging, the facilitator will show you if there are any clamping options. So these are just normal wood clamps, and it's very important to hold the material down. Um, there is some sideways cutting forces, but more importantly, what will happen is the water shoots down and then swells back up around the sides and lifts the material. And if that happens, it will push your material into the head of the mixing tube. And the water then won't come out. It will shoot up this, up this hose, and this will be wet. So then that, that whole thing is going to be a wet, soggy mess, and you'll have to clean it all out and dry it. So you really want to make sure this is well clamped down. So the way to do that is... We're actually we're gonna be cutting over this corner, so I'll just clamp down over here. Clamp here. That's good. And then I'll put it on the other side. Sometimes you might be able to hear it now. The machine is humming. Um, that's that's not a big deal. It's just the, the motors. That's what they do. Down. Okay, that, that should be pretty darn good. And maybe we'll just put one more just, just for yucks. Okay, so I'm just clamping on the bottom side of the rails in case that wasn't clear. Alright, flex a little bit. Okay, so that should be good and secure. Uh, now, bear in mind, we just put obstacles in here, so you really want to make sure not to hit those with the machine. So now we'll go over how to move it in all various directions. So soft limits are now enabled, so it should be a little safer. So I can hit the up arrow, and I'll slowly move it up the Y axis, the right arrow, again by holding shift, shift, and move more quickly, be careful. Um, and then, let's say you want to go up and down quickly, that's zero and one, uh, sorry, one and seven. So seven is up, seven is down, I'm sorry, seven is up, one is down. If you want to go up and down slowly, you page up and page down. Those are very slow. Um, and all of those shortcuts are on the sheet on the side. So let's import our program now. So we're going to go to uh, File, Open. And we're gonna do test hole, which we put in the member files, or test circle, which I misspelled. Um, and we're gonna tell it the material. So this is mild steel, it's galvanized, but it's close enough. The important piece of this is the machinability coefficient. So that means they've determined a, a, this scale of how machinable something is, where mild steel is 81.3. The lower the number, the harder it is to machine. Um, the higher the number, the easier. So something, let's see, really easy, looks like, so like hardwood, pretty darn easy. Foam, super duper easy. Foam is 14,000, so you could just rip through foam. Um, but we are cutting metal, which in this case it's mild steel, so it's actually, that's pretty hard compared to like aluminum, which is 215. So mild steel, um, the thickness is important. So I happen to know this is 0 0.02 inches. You can use calipers or micrometers to measure the thickness of your material. It needs to know this to know how quickly it can move to cut through it. The tool offset is still a pretty new tube, so it's 0 0.015 inches. And we're not rotating or scaling our design. Um, if we were etching, so if any of these lines that we'd put into it were etches, it would ask us about the etch speed and scribe speed. And we can check for collisions. It says no potential collisions found. And now we're going to click OK. So, so it's figuring it out. And this is where it's going to start in the lower left corner. It's going to traverse over here, cut into the longer lead, go around, and then come out. And then when it's done, it'll go to this little spot here. Um, so there are a few things that are important. Uh, we can tell it to, so if you were to give it a home, then we could tell it to, to go home after that. Right now it doesn't. It's just using the machine home, which is the original home position. Um, 
then these are just manual ways of moving it around. If you want to change the path setup, you're like, oh, I actually want to change things about it, and you can click here, and it'll just reopen this page. If we right click, then you can insert a pause point. So let's say we want to go halfway and then check something, you do that there. Um, tree view, you can see some interesting things to, to make sure it all work well. You're welcome to click through that. Begin machining does, does the obvious. But you, if you right click, you can also go to spot on path. So let's say you tried once, didn't work super well, so then you could go back to that particular spot and just start instead of recutting the whole thing. Test, we'll see in a minute. Um, and then saw, so let's say you just had a piece of material and you just wanted to cut a line. You didn't want to go through layout, make a whole design file. You could just use this like a, like a cutoff saw. Um, so those are some of the things here. So, okay. All right, so now we'll look at setting the tool up. So there are a bunch of things in these drawers. There's some manuals in the top drawers. Um, I think really the only important things are here. Um, and we're just gonna use this. So this is a homemade tool offset. So figuring out how high we want it to be above the material. And there, if there are more useful things, they'll, they'll be labeled, but for right now, this is the only thing you need. So we're gonna figure out how high you want it to be. You can see the water level rising, so now it'll be cutting thoroughly underwater. And I'm just gonna put this here and then move the head over to be right above it. And what we're gonna do is push down until this piece is standing upwards and it can still move around, but we can also slide it out. We don't wanna pinch down because that could risk breaking something. We just wanna touch it so it'll come up and then stop. So that's what I'm gonna aim for. And then only because I didn't mention it before, this is a spray shroud. So right now it's in the up position. When you're cutting, it'll be in the down position. Um, and this is just to help contain all the spray. You want it to be at about the same height as the material. So you would just slide that up or down to have it at the same height as the material. So nothing terribly crazy there. But for now, when we're trying to see the probe, we want to have that off. All right, so I'm just gonna move it a little faster over here. And then here, down. Let's be careful not to ram this. test it now that it looks pretty good and that's nice and snug so we'll take that out so we're all done with that piece just putting it back in the floor um, so now our z height is, has been set so that's pretty good and i think this is a fine position to start cutting um, so let's look back at the screen here we can see it's going to start in the, this corner closest to us it's going to come up here and cut in the area to the upper right of our starting place so if we look here it's gonna cut in this area, which is good. There's metal to be cut there. Um, so let's say you're doing a water only cut. What you do is just remove this hose, and, just boop, and now no abrasive is gonna come out. This is fed just by the suction, so once you disconnect it, no abrasive is gonna come out there. Um, and something that is probably worthwhile doing is doing a test cut in the beginning, or just a, a test fire. So we're gonna move the, uh, the head over to just a place where there's just water. So we're gonna shoot down into the water. Oops, sorry. So, there we go. So now it's just over water. And I'm gonna go to test, which is right over here. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll put the shroud down. Um, and the things we're going to be looking for are you'll, you'll hear and see the water coming. The more important thing is just checking to see if air is flowing through this. Uh, I'm sorry, if garnet is flowing through this. So I'll turn it on and okay. test. And we're going to test cutting head. Um, so you think it's, it's, a, it's just test cutting head here. So it's doing pump jet abrasive. So click next. And it's going to start. So 
I just click stop. But if it wasn't flowing, um, then you would need to go through a bit of a procedure to uh, clean this up. So we'll have a video for how to do that. It's gonna be on the page for the tool where you're watching this video. Um, but you only need to watch that if you if there ends up being water in here. For example, you don't clamp well enough and it comes up, that'll be like a 15 minute procedure. So I'll have that in a separate video. So you don't, you shouldn't need to be doing that. Thing. Save you a little time this week. All right, so we will close the test operation. Now we saw that that worked, the pump is ready. We're gonna move it back to where we want. So I'm just gonna shift here. So it's gonna cut up and right of where we are, so that's pretty good, it'll cut in that little area. Um, let's say I forgot how big this was. You can look at some of the information on the cut here. So it'll take 0.2 minutes, so that's pretty great. Um, then it should only use 0.04 pounds of abrasive. Uh, let's see, the width of the path is an inch. The height is also an inch. So it'll be about an inch size circle. Length of tool passes, a bunch of other information. So let's say you wanted to do a dry run. Do you wanted to make sure that it's gonna go in the right place, wasn't gonna hit anything? We would click begin machining. And instead of clicking start, we would right click start and say dry run at say half speed. Um, now we click that, we go over here, put my fingers on the pause button in case it does something we don't like. But that looked fine. Didn't hit anything, didn't look problematic. It's in an area that we thought it was gonna go to. And, and just as a reminder, this blue one's the pause button. It will be labeled, but when you're watching it, I would recommend having your finger right there so you can just pause it and be safe. Um, okay. So that's, that's that. Um, so now we can cut for real. Um, then, okay, so the shroud is down. So I'm gonna click begin machining. Um, and then click start. Something that someone may have picked up on is that I did not put a, a tab on this piece. So it may have just fallen right through. It also may not have because I lined it up with one of the grates. So what we can do is use this tool. This just has a magnet on the end of a stick. And it's like, a little harder. And so I'm gonna move the head and just try to pick this up with the stick. So I'm just gonna jog this over. Oh, means to close. I'm crazy. And then drag this over. And our circle is gone like the wind. Um, but let's say we had a bigger piece. So, you know, it's bigger. So we can see it outside of the shroud. Then something you cannot do is put your hand in here when it's running. When it's running, your hand does not go in there. Can't be more clear than that. This little stick, you can reach over and grab grab your piece of metal before it falls in. Um, you can see here, it's not running, that there's a little tab. So this is a tab that was holding holding on to it. So you could lift up, break that off, and then um, and then do that. So I'm actually gonna just re-import this with a tab. So I just added a tab to our file. I also made the circle a little bit bigger. Now it's more like two inches by two inches. Uh, and I added an extra little leg of traverse here so it should get the head out of the way when it's done so that we can see the piece. So it shouldn't fall through because the tab, but actually looks like it, it may still because you can see that we have this line, so this is the, the design, and then the, it put the, the kerf on the inside. So there's that traverse is actually gonna be ignored, so the piece may still fall through. So that, I'll show you how to use the, the magnet. Something else we wanna do here is set the Z zero. Uh, so uh, Zach, our videographer, pointed out astutely that it's possible that our rubber shroud, the yellow thing, just moved our circle away. So we want to raise it up, but we don't have to want to have to re-zero again. So I'm just going to click the zero zero here, and that's going to set our zero for the height. So now what we can do is we can come up, we can check underneath, and when we're done, we'll just click on this green arrow, and that will go to our zero position. We can also do that for X and Y. 
So this is the user home, so we can zero out our home if we wanted. Uh, it's not terribly important, and we can zero out the path start. Um, so the home is generally in the lower left-hand corner towards us. The path start is wherever you want it to be. So that could be useful if you're trying to lay things out, you know, and I hope we'll get a feel for that. So we've zeroed out the height, which is all that really matters to us right now. And I'm going to hit 7 to bring him up. And no, sir. Nope. So um, we will click our go to Z0. It'll confirm, saying, are you sure you want to do this? We'll say, OK. It's going to go back down. Um, let's say, um, how can we do this? So just, just as a, it won't do it on here, because there's no place I can't think where it would let us. Um, actually, that's not true. So if, if I were to run the head of the machine all the way up to the Y positive end, and then told it to start, it would say, sorry, no can do. Your path would hit the limits of your machine. And so it's, it does protect itself in that way. That it won't let you cut as long as soft limits are enabled. It won't let you cut outside of where you can. Though you could still hit a clamp on the way, whatnot. Also, if you were to go somewhere, it will ask you before it does that traverse automatically because it's going to do it quickly to make sure there's nothing in the way. Uh, just, just to reiterate one more time, the mixing tube, $200. So double check every time before you go to do a move. Um, don't want to make that mistake. So let's see, we're going to just go to a new position to cut our circle. So we go over here. Alex, I'll find a place for a circle. It doesn't, if it overlaps with the other one, it's not a big deal because we don't care about the circle. So I'm going to um, click begin machining, see if there's anything else terribly important. I'm sure there is, and I'm sure you'll figure it out. Click begin machining, start. So you can see that this tab that I made failed. It was going to fall. So you would need to mess around with your pathing to make sure that it was tracing on the outside of your path so that the traverse was protected, or the tab was protected, or make your tab wider. So either of those would have helped. Um, you're welcome to use this. Bear in mind, this you know, could break the tube, $200. Uh, and it's also like, use it with caution, obviously, do this when the cut is finished, when there's no risk of this thing hitting it. You can do a dry run beforehand to make sure, because sometimes you could have had your path end up over here. So then it's going to zip over towards you. So you need to make 100% sure that you're not going to do that. Tabs are definitely the preferred method. But sometimes, and, and now like there's a, a little thing on here and you go over to the grinding wheel and grind this off. There's also a burr around the edge. So you need to take a file or a deburring tool and clean this burr off anyways. So. Um, this, but the magnet shouldn't be your, your go-to, but it is there as an option if need be. Uh, all right, so now we're going to look at the shutdown procedure. Um, one very important thing is running water through the tube for 30 seconds before you finish. That's just going to clear out all the gunk. That's important because if you don't, it's just going to sit there and very quickly wear through the pieces. So there's actually inside of here is a diamond uh, that the water is being pushed through. And if, water, if the grit just sits there, it'll gunk it up. So you want to clean that out. Before we do that, we're going to remove this hose so we aren't filling, so we aren't putting garnet there. Um, so I'll move that over an open place and just run water through it, do a test cut for 30 seconds. So that'll help clear that out. Okay. I'm close this and then over the little wall we cut out. I'm going to click test <clears throat> and click test cutting head. We're going to do that for 30 seconds.
So we've now cleaned it out, so that's good. Um, for the next person, it'll be easier to use and load material if the head is raised up a little bit. So I'm just gonna jog this up so there's a little room underneath to work with material. You wanna remove the material that you're using. Um, so there are a few steps involved there. So we're going to remove the clamps. This guy. to get the last. Okay, obviously try not to drop anything down there. And now we can spray it off, which is not terribly complicated. But we're just gonna keep the sheet and make sure not to turn this into. Grab a hose and just First it off, so we just to wash the garnet off, obviously you can put most of it in the tank as best you can. Turn it around to get at it more easily. Alright, so we're taking this off. That was and timers, and we see 2.335, go to the spreadsheet, put in 2.335, so we use abrasives, so that was a dollar and 20 cents for those cuts. Um, then we're going to go to the web page that I guess I closed intentionally, which is Make Haven Store. Oh, it was already open, that's okay. Um, and then to water jet and you could either use scent credit so we know it's it's a dollar twenty or you could click on with abrasive either way um, <clears throat> and let's see it just says up to cart and then you change your quantity so this is just by the minute so in this case you know maybe just just round um, so if it's a buck twenty, just you can do a dollar. If it's a dollar sixty, round to two dollars. Um, or if you want to be more precise, then you're welcome to pay uh, by the cent. So you just click on here and pay at the cart, your PayPal, and by exactly how much. So in this case, you would we'll just remove this one and pay by the number of exactly pennies. Uh, either those pay, you're good to go. Um, so then we would click paid after we do that. And then if the mixing tube were to break, so I actually, I did break a mixing tube. So it's right here. This is the, uh, the carbide piece of metal that 
is very easily snapped. And so I was setting the soft limits, so I was getting very close to the edge, and I had the tip too far, too low, and it hit the aluminum block on the edge of the machine holding the crates down and just click. It's not dramatic, it's just very expensive. So this is just there as an example. Luckily we didn't break anything. Um, then um, we're gonna turn everything off. So we'll just X out of here, out of here. Um, we don't need to save anything. Just turn this off like a normal computer, shut down. And then the air we can, we can leave on. It's a pretty good system that doesn't leak. Um, and then we're just gonna wait for this to put a little light on the shooter top, so that's off. So we'll just turn this guy off, turn this off, 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 and off. Um, the, uh, and that's that's pretty much all there is to it. We'll probably have more videos going more deep into how to use the software, how to uh, you know, clean out the tube if you need to. Um, but I hope you learned something from this, and, and now it's time to come in and talk to one of the facilitators so you can practice and make sure that you're good to go, and then I'm excited to see all the things that everyone cuts. Thanks for watching.